Hey everyone, it's Leela with Miss Kiss Creations. Welcome back to my channel. Today's Tumblr tutorial, I'm going to show you how I create my Milky Way tumblers. I wanted to create this video and kind of recreate my original Milky Way tumbler because I realized it's really outdated and I've changed the process a little bit. So I wanted to answer a lot of questions that I often receive while doing Milky Ways and explain some easier ways to create this Milky Ways and to kind of get over a lot of hiccups that a lot of people go through while creating their Milky Ways. So this video is going to be just a little slower than all of my other videos, only because I wanna answer all those important questions. And like always, all of my materials will be listed in my description below, including direct links and coupon codes. And with all that being said, let's go ahead and get started with this tutorial. I'm starting with a 20 ounce thick stainless steel tumbler. I first sand this tumbler down with an 80 grit sanding block. I typically use a sanding block between 80 grit and 180 grit. After I sanded this tumbler, I then wiped it down with 91% alcohol. You need at least 91% alcohol because that is the enough percentage to wipe away any of those oils or excess sanding dust that may have added to your tumbler while sanding. Make sure you're giving your tumbler a nice sanding and make sure you sand that rim area because a lot of people forget about that area, but remember there's going to be some epoxy on that areas as well. Take that 91% alcohol and wipe it down really well. Once that 91% alcohol is dried, I then went in and I spray painted my tumbler. This tumbler is going to be a purple tumbler, so I always like to spray a base of the color, the themed color of the design if that makes sense so if i was doing a blue milky way i would do a blue base you do not have to do that base you can do a white base if you don't have specific colors on hand you can also paint this with acrylic paint as well you do not have to spray paint your tumbler just make sure you're doing a nice base and it doesn't matter if it's sloppy if it has some spots on it because we're going to cover this base up with a lot of glitter and a lot of paints later let that dry for about 20 to 25 minutes and then we'll move on to that next step. And now that my tumbler's base is dried, I'm showing you all of the glitters I'll be using. And one of the reasons why I like to use a colored base is because you'll notice that I'm using some white or transparent glitter. So that way when I place that on the tumbler, you're going to see that purple base instead of a white base. I'm going to apply all of my glitters using the epoxy method. I like to use this method because it allows me to give me a lot of time to create my Milky Way effect with the glitters. I am using my regular epoxy. I do not use fast set epoxy because I feel like it dries too quickly and I feel rushed. All I do is I stick my finger inside of my epoxy cup and then I just apply that epoxy on my tumbler. You need a very little amount. This epoxy is acting as an adhesive. So just imagine if you'd spray this with spray adhesive, that thin coat of spray adhesive is just enough to add your glitters to your tumbler. Make sure you're getting that all around your tumbler before adding your glitters to your tumblers. Once your epoxy is added to your tumbler, I'm going right in with the glitters. I'm not waiting. You don't have to let your epoxy dry. This epoxy is still wet. So I'm adding my glitters to my tumbler. You'll see that I'm trying to open my glitters first, and then I just go with the tumbler. Do not chase your tumbler. Let your tumbler spin around. Take your time, apply the glitters, just small bits at a time. You'll see that my line is getting thicker and thicker every time I add that glitter. So I'm adding a little bit of glitter, and then I'm going in a diagonal motion. You'll see that my tumbler is spinning in the direction of where my glitter is being placed, if that makes sense. And then I add each glitter step by step. I do not think about what colors I add next to one another. I just honestly pick up the next glitter bottle and just add it to the tumbler. I will say I don't like a lot of chunkies in one area. So uh, I don't know, but I notice after that I typically do like a fine chunky and then fine chunky. So I don't like to have a lot of fines together or a lot of chunky uh, glitters together. And you'll see that I'm adding some of those glitters into a Dixie cup. The reason why I do that is because I have a very heavy hand. So the glitters that I'm placing into those cups, they must be really full because if I would dump a really full bottle of glitter on a tumbler, it will literally go everywhere. Y'all know if you guys have been following me for a while, y'all know that I always say I have a heavy hand. I really do. I will dump the glitter out 
on the entire tumbler and ruined the design. So placing those glitters inside of a smaller cup, just a little, amount, a little bit of amount of glitter, it allows you to have better control over the glitter and you could just apply a little bit at a time. Because remember, you can always add more. It's a lot harder to take away, especially whenever you're dealing with glitter and epoxy. And I always do this with my Milky Ways. I always end up finding another glitter for my shelves and just adding it halfway. So you can add 10 glitters, you can add five glitter colors, you can add two glitter colors if you like. Remember, these videos are always made for inspiration, so create something and I'm sure it's going to look beautiful. With this Milky Way swirl or the diagonal effect swirl, whatever you wanna call it, you'll see that towards the end of my tumbler that I run out of space so my swirls get kinda of smaller. It kinda of looks like a triangle up top. That does not matter. Just place that glitter on your tumbler, keep it in the diagonal direction, and it's going to look beautiful. Don't overthink this process. These tumblers, they have a lot of steps and all the specific steps are important. But overall, these tumblers are very simple and they're kind of messy. So if you do kind of mess up here and there, you really can't see it and it blends so well together. It looks beautiful at the end. Once all of my glitters are added to my tumbler, I then let my tumbler spin on the cup turner for four hours. I then turn off my cup turner and then I let my tumbler air dry for another 20 hours. I always like to let my tumblers dry or cure for a total of 24 hours uh, before moving on to the next step. A lot of questions that I get is when can I actually remove my tumbler from the cup turner? Or in other words, when can I move my tumbler to its drying rack? Right when you turn off your cup turner, so after the four hours, if you're able to leave your tumbler stopped on your cup turner, then you're able to place your tumbler on its drying rack right side up. So that way you can take this tumbler off of the turner, you can place it to your drying rack, and then you have a free cup turner for another project. Once I'm finished adding those glitters to the base of the tumbler, I then try to mix most of those glitters onto that paper, and then I press down the bottom of my tumbler to that paper. I also grab the paper underneath it and then have the paper cling to the bottom. I like to do it this way. It just gives it a really pretty touch on the bottom. Mix all those beautiful colors, and then you'll see that it is gorgeous. I then take some more glitters, and then I just add around the tumbler if there's any bare spots or anything. Once all of my glitters are added to my entire tumbler, this is when I go around the tumbler and I press on the tumbler using a gloved hand. I do this immediately after applying these glitters. This is a very important step. This is uh, to help you not have a bumpy tumbler. So you'll notice I'm focusing mainly on those chunky glitters. I know a lot of people use parchment paper to do this, so they wrap the parchment paper around the tumbler and press down. I've always found that a glove hand works perfectly fine for me, so use whichever method you like. But again, this is very important. You wanna press down and not rub on your tumbler because when you go to epoxy over this, it's not going to have a lot of glitters peek through that tumbler or peek through that epoxy. Take your time with this step. Wipe away any glitters that may be just stubborn or you can't press down. Just pick them right off. Stop your tumbler like I'm doing and really press around. Get that top of the tumbler and make sure you get the bottom of the tumbler. Once you're finished pressing down, turn your tumbler turner back on and then let your tumbler spin and cure and then we'll move on to that next step. and you'll see that most of those glitters are pressed or flattened onto that tumbler. And once that epoxy is cured, you're going to go in with your second coat of epoxy. This is a 20 ounce tumbler. I times 20 by two, which is 40, and that's how much epoxy I'm using for this tumbler. So 40 milliliters of epoxy, that's 20 part A and 20 part B. If I was working with a 10 ounce tumbler, I would times that by two, and then I would put 20 milliliters of epoxy. It's just a good base or a good kind of um, number to go off of. Sometimes I use less, 
but uh, I'd rather have more epoxy left over than not enough to epoxy my tumbler. You want a lot of epoxy on this tumbler to seal that glitter because once you seal that glitter, we're going to sand after this. And you if you have a thin coat of epoxy over this glitter, then when you sand, you're going to sand away that glitter and it's going to look really silver and just sand it away. So make sure you're doing this, uh, giving it a nice coat and even coat on your tumbler. I did use fast set epoxy for this, so this did cure in about two to five hours. It depends on which brand fast set epoxy you use, so make sure you read your directions on your fast set epoxy. You can use regular epoxy for this, I just had the fast set on hand. And once my epoxy is cured on the tumbler, I'm then going to go in with an X-Acto knife. So this rim has a lot of epoxy on it. I take my X-Acto knife and I cut around the top of my tumbler. That's removing any of that excess epoxy. I do this after epoxying my tumblers after each step. This just makes the cleanup process at the end a lot easier. So make sure you're taking your time with this. Once I'm finished cutting the rim, I then go in with a sanding block. I use a 220 grit sanding block and I sand around my tumbler. I start with the 220 grit, I sand lightly. I'm just sanding any of those bubbles that may have been created on the epoxy curing process or any of those stubborn glitters that's popping up. So I first start with my 220 grit sanding block and then I transfer to a 180 grit sanding block if needed. Now remember, I press down that glitter during the glitter process and then I also apply that thick coat of epoxy. So those two things really help me have a smooth tumbler. So those two steps are very important for you to have a smooth tumbler so your tumbler isn't wobbly or uneven at the end. After I finish sanding, I then take my 91% alcohol and I wipe away any of that excess sand and dust or oils that may have been created on my tumbler. Once I'm finished wiping the tumbler down with 91% alcohol, I then place that tumbler right on its cup turner and then we're going in with adding the paint. I mix a total of 30 milliliters of epoxy. That's 15 milliliters part A and 15 milliliters part B. I'm using 20 milliliters for the tumbler's base and then I'm using 10 milliliters for the paint. So what I do first is I separate. So I'm separating 20 milliliters of epoxy for just the tumbler, and then I'm separating the 10 milliliters of epoxy for the paint. I'm using three acrylic paint colors, so I'm splitting that 10 milliliters of epoxy into three separate cups. Once I have my epoxy separated, I'm then going in with my 20 milliliters of epoxy and I'm adding it to my tumbler. So I'm using a 20 ounce tumbler, so that's why I am using 20 milliliters of epoxy. And then I just add 10 to separate my paint colors. So if you were using a 30 ounce stainless steel tumbler, you would mix a total of 40 milliliters of epoxy. So you would use 30 milliliters of epoxy for the base and then the extra 10 milliliters of epoxy for that paint mixture. When you add your epoxy to your tumbler, it's going to feel really weird because you're going to feel like you're adding too much epoxy. That's how it should feel. So whenever you're like, oh wow, this is a lot of epoxy, that's okay. We need a lot of epoxy for this step so we can have that Milky Way effect so those colors can move around your tumbler. Once your epoxy is added to your tumbler, hit your tumbler with a heat gun or a torch just to pop any bubbles. Do not add the paint right after this. Do not add paint or inks to a hot tumbler because it's going to separate those paints and it's going to look really bad and it's not going to have that nice cloudy effect. So while you are adding your paint to your epoxy, you're allowing your tumbler to cool off from that heat gun or that torch. So you'll see that I'm adding just little drops of paint to my epoxy cups. And these are the colors I'm using, again, listed in my description. 
I think I over added all the paint on here, but that's okay. You just need two or three drops and then mix your paints together with that epoxy. So you have your separated epoxy and then you have your three separate colors. I always use white, so I always choose like two or three colors and then I use white just to give it a nice look at the end. And also another question I get, it does not matter the finish of the paint. So you can use gloss, you can use matte, or you can use satin acrylic paints. And once I have my paint and epoxy mixed together, I then take my wooden stick and then I apply those paints on the tumbler. I'm going in the same direction as I went when I applied the glitter to the tumbler. I'm starting at the very top and then I'm taking my stick and I'm going all the way to the bottom. You'll see that I have some paint that's just kind of sitting around at the bottom there. That's okay. You cannot mess this process up. And once I added enough paint, I then take my gloved hand and then I make squiggly lines going in that same diagonal direction, going with that glitter. This is something that I do differently than my original video. This helps that tumbler be very flat and it helps it not be uneven or bubbly in areas. So while I'm doing this, I'm kind of thinking about making my tumbler even and not pressing too hard in certain spots, wiping away too much epoxy and then light in other spots. So like I said, this really does help for me personally to have a very smooth tumbler at the end. And you can also mix these colors all together. You'll see I haven't wiped my glove at all. I just mix whichever colors mix together because all the colors, well, they go beautifully together. So it just really does help uh, the overall process. And this is something I've changed and I think it still gives it a beautiful mucky way effect. So then I add more paint to the tumbler if needed. And then I go back in my, with my gloved hands and I do the little squiggly lines all over again. Once you're satisfied with how it looks, you're going to let your tumbler again spin on the cup turner for four hours, then turn off your cup turner and then let your tumbler air dry or air cure for another 20 hours. So I did not use my fast set epoxy for this tumbler. Uh, this step, because uh, if you are using fast set epoxy for me personally, I feel like I'm going to be rushed and then it gets really sticky. So I use my regular set epoxy for this step. And once this epoxy has cured, you're then remove your tumbler from the cup turner, sand your tumbler lightly if needed, add your decal and then epoxy another coat of epoxy over your decal. If you don't wanna add a decal to your tumbler, then all you have to do is let this epoxy cure and then add a thin coat of epoxy to lock in all of those paints and this design on your tumbler. Once the final coat of epoxy is cured on your tumbler, I then take my X-Acto knife for the final time and I cut around the rim of the tumbler, removing any of that excess epoxy. And then I take 100% acetone and I clean up the inside. After I acetone the inside of the tumbler, I wash out the entire tumbler using my Dawn dish soap. This is my process for every single tumbler. This is my cleanup process. I've used it for years and it's always worked for me. Once I finish cleaning up my tumbler, the inside and the outside with my soap, my tumbler is ready to go and it's ready for sale. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope I answered a lot of the questions that I typically receive. If I didn't, like always, leave me a comment and I'll try to answer them. Or you can always reach out to me on my Facebook, Instagram, or TikTok. Thanks so much for watching y'all and I'll see y'all next time.